Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's warm here, okay? So they're telling me, come on, it's dark. It's late. You know, everybody's hot. I'm sweating too. I was in my shorts about five minutes ago and, and I just got dressed into these clothes and now it's really warm. But I'm glad that you're here tonight. We're glad to be here. We're going to have a good time together. <coughs> Excuse me. As you're probably aware, at Cornerstone, whenever we have a musical, we usually have a good time of just coming together. We want to sing praises to God. We want to lift up the name of our Lord because our God is great, and we just want to let other people know about him, you know? And so that's what, we're, that's what we do. That's why we have the musical. Yeah, the kids get to sing. They get to do choreography. They get to do drama. It's fun to see your friend and say, oh, they messed up. Oh, they did a good job, you know? Uh, all that sort of thing. But really, it's about God. All right? We just want to glorify God. We just want to sing praises to God. And we get the chance to do that together. And this is when it, the conditions are just right, you know? When, when the weather is great and people kind of relaxed and, and everything like that. We just had a big meal there. Lots of people are kind of, uh, you know, just feeling uh, satisfied there. Uh, but it's a good time for us to be here tonight. Um, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to start us in a word of prayer, and I'm going to turn the time over to Re Reverend uh, Clifford Fong, and he's going to lead us in, uh, in, in just three songs. He says we have three songs, right, Clifford? Three. Three songs tonight there because uh, it's to give us a chance to get warmed up and just kind of understand what's going to be happening. We want, we want you to loosen up, right? I don't want you to be all tight in here and stuff, and, you know, and the kids say something funny. You say, should I laugh? It's a church, you know? <laughs> It's okay to laugh, okay? It's okay to laugh. It's okay to cheer somebody if you want to cheer for them. Usually that happens anyway, but I just want to let you know the, the house rules so that you're, you, you, you feel comfortable if that's, that's what's happening with you, okay? Another one of the house rules, I don't know if they ran this by you or not, but we ask people to turn their cell phones off or put them on privacy mode or vibrate or whatever. And please don't take a call inside here because it's pretty rude to be sitting there having a conversation, you know, while somebody else is trying to watch, you know, what's happening happening up here, okay? So if you have to take the call, please just step outside. You know, we understand sometimes those situations arise uh, and you have to do it. Just go right ahead. Uh, don't feel ashamed. Don't feel embarrassed. Just go and do what you got to do, okay? But please don't take it in here. Another thing we ask is we ask you not to eat in here. I know it's, uh, it's, it's warm and everything like that. And maybe you brought in a, you know, a big gulp Slurpee, Starbucks coffee or something like that. You can just take it outside and drink it out there because this is a place where we worship on Sundays as well. It's kind of messed up when you walk in, you come and sit on Sunday morning and, you know, your feet are sticking to the rug or something like that, right? You know, it's kind of like a low-budget theater, okay? And we don't want that kind of, uh, kind of atmosphere as we're worshiping the Lord together. So we're going to ask you uh, not to do that, okay? Uh, if you have to eat something, your kids are just starving to death, you can go outside. It looks like you're going to open up the doors, let some, of the, some air in here and everything like that. You'll be able to see and you won't miss any of it, okay? Uh, any other rules I need to mention, Reverend Fong? No flash photography, right? No flash photography. That's something that, you know, kind of dying and stuff, but still no flash photography. If you're trying to videotape it, you know, you know when you lift your hand up like that, the people behind you cannot see, right? So just in case you didn't know that, if you want to videotape it, you know, I, I just kind of go low, low, low profile on it, okay? Um, and just make sure that you're uh, courteous to the people that are around you, all right? Uh, without any other rules or anything like that, I'm going to open us in prayer and turn the time over to uh, Reverend Fong. So let's join our hearts in prayer uh, for this good evening, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us the evening together, Lord, and a beautiful day to be able to, to just enjoy it. I mean, some of us got to go out, some of us had to stay inside. Whatever it is, Lord, we're thankful to you for, for the lovely weather. We thank you that you've given us a chance to be here tonight, Lord, and you have a reason for us to be here. You know, the name of the musical is I Have a Purpose, God, and, and you know, each one of us goes through life trying to figure out what our purpose is, Lord, what it, why it is that we're here, why it is that you put us here, Lord. And I pray that as we have this, uh, this time of the musical, as the, you know, the choir is singing and, and doing choreography and drama and stuff like that, that the questions that maybe are raised, that some of the things that they're doing there would, would cause us to think, Lord, because um, we don't just come here to, to just sit and be amused and turn our minds off, but, but the idea is that you're speaking to us tonight. So I pray, Lord, that we would be open to that message, Lord, and we would enjoy ourselves 
as well because it's a good message. It's one of enjoyment as well. We pray, Lord, that you just um, be with the choir and that you be with the band, you be with Reverend Fong, be with me, be with all of us here tonight, Lord, that this might be a glorifying time to you, an edifying time to each one here. Bless our evening now. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Reverend Fong. I feel good. <laughs> you guys know what that means? No. You don't know what that means. That's an old, old song. This guy, you know, I feel good. Do, 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 do. I hope you feel good. You guys feel good? Uh, sometimes people don't feel good because they're kind of scared. They have a phobia or a fear or something like that. Hi, Phoebe. Hi, hi. Okay, um, so we need to break some fear today, okay? So Reverend, Reverend I was going to say Reverend Long, Reverend Crook already mentioned that we need to just kind of, can you take a deep breath? Let it out slowly through your mouth, okay? Take a deep breath. Turn to your right, let it out slowly. You want to cool them off, okay? This is a gentle breeze. You didn't have garlic or onions, right? Okay. All right. I want you to touch bases with five people around you, okay? Just um, any way you want. You can say hi. You can give them a, a fist. You can give them a high five. Five people around you, okay? That means you have to go behind you. Uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Cinco, okay? Cinco de miles coming up. Okay, stop. Okay, no mud wrestling, no things like that, all right? We're going to sing a song. It's called uh, Trading My Sorrows. And the idea is that some people have sorrows. Some people have shame. They messed up, okay? Uh, I, 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 was I got to know Brussels' parents, okay? And I said, uh, yeah, I've heard of Brussels. Is, then he said, is it good or bad? And... I don't know, because I don't know, okay? But I just heard the name, okay? So um, we don't want anybody to be shamed. We don't want any, some of, some of people are sick, okay? Uh, some of people are, are, are in pain, okay? This song says we can trade all those things for the joy of the Lord, okay? God knows what you're going through, and he wants to put joy in your life. Even though you might be go through sorrow or shame or, oh, all the words are there. Okay, so I don't have to memorize it. Okay, uh, sickness or pain, okay? God can still fill your heart with joy, and that's what the song's about. We're going go, to go straight through, okay? Here we go. If you know it, sing louder. If you don't know it, just uh, hum it a little bit and get with it, okay? All right, you get the, get the feel of it? Here we go. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. Say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. First verse again, trading. Got it? I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame.
A lot of you are not in choir, otherwise you'll be up there, okay? So we want to encourage you to keep on singing, making a joyful noise to the Lord. You don't have to have a perfect voice to sing around here. I'm up here. <laughs> okay, um, there's a song called Our God is Greater, okay? We've been singing this uh, at, uh, all last year at camp, and um, enjoy it. Enjoy the drum solo and everything like that, okay? talking about Jesus and his first miracle, changing the water into wine. Water you turned into wine, open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you.
Okay, uh, any of the older people have a headache yet? Okay, it's a little too beady, pouty. Yes, hi. You're not an old one, Austin. But your dad's here. <laughs> Paul, you okay? <laughs> no, Austin was waving his hand. Sorry. Okay, we have a nice song that, um, sheesh, how do I say this? Many, many moons ago, I took this graduate class down at uh, 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 this California Graduate School of Theology, and it was on church growth. And one of our field trips, we went over to West Angeles, okay? West Los Angeles is like Highway, Highway 10, Crenshaw. Oh, you know? You know that neighborhood? It is a scary neighborhood, okay? We drove, a bunch of us, uh, you know, people that are studying to go into ministry and stuff like that, we drove through there and there's these old warehouses across the street. It was a, a furniture place that's all run down. And uh, we went to this place called West Angeles Church of God in Christ, okay? It's a very scary neighborhood, okay? But this church that we visited had a fence, a little higher than our fence, okay? And they had... See, our, our, our traffic people, they wear bright yellow stuff, basic stuff. These guys wear black, okay? They're that big, that big. They're wearing black. I don't know if any of them are packing, okay? But it's serious stuff, okay? They, they're, they, have, they, they don't have our walkie-talkies like we do. They have serious radios and stuff like that. And I found out why, okay? It's a tough neighborhood, and it's you know, gates all around, and these security guards are like big guys, they're like football players, you know. So we went in, and we took a look, and what happened, my instructor knows the, the, what, the senior pastor is Bishop uh, Charles E. Blake, okay, and we went in there, and um, he showed us the sanctuary, they had this nice pulpit that's all clear, okay, it's all you know, plastic and stuff, anyway, I've been, I take too long, uh, he showed us the wedding room, okay? They have wedding banquets there for like a thousand people. And it's trimmed with burgundy uh, uh, things and gold trim and everything. They have a super big kitchen that's like three times as big as our kitchen, okay? And they have big parties, elegant places, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful place, okay? They have a choir. I just saw it on YouTube this week. Uh, it's called um, Los Angeles uh, Mass Choir. Okay, and we're going to sing one of their songs that, that, that sort of brought me to it, okay? It's called, well, in our hymnal on page of 588, I think, uh, it's called Sanctuary, okay? But our gang knows it as Lord Prepare Me, okay? And the idea is that God has planned for you certain things in your life. He has a wonderful, purposeful life for you. And that's what the musical is about tonight, okay? That, that God has something planned for you. He wants you to be pure and holy. He wants to try you and test you and make sure you're strong and you're true. And that's the idea that God wants to build you into a sanctuary, okay? In uh, 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 3.16, it says, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit if you have asked Jesus into your life, okay? You are the temple. You are a sanctuary for God. And we're just going to sing it over. It's a very short chorus, all right? How many know the song already? Oh, sheesh. They told me that you knew this song. Just Grace and... Okay, four, three of you. Wow. Okay, we're going to learn it together. I just learned it. Pastor Crook was singing it in the, in the hallways and I was learning it, okay? Okay. Nice and easy. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true oh you guys know what I hear you now with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary everybody let's go Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true 
lined up since I was up here talking earlier, so they're ready to go, all right? And uh, the name of the musical is called I Have a Purpose. It's going to be performed by our CEBC, Cornerstone Evangelical Baptist Church High School Choir. I want to direct your attention to the back of the room as they enter, okay?
Hey guys, come on, let's go. Let's go to Target. I hear they have all the new school stuff out. Um, I guess I could use a new purse. I need a new calculator. What happened to your old one? Marty sat on it the last day of physics. No way. Yeah, totally trashed it. It was third period, you Wait. see it. Do you hear that? Hear what? I don't hear anything. Yes, yes it is. It's the sale rack and it's calling my name. Let's go. <laughs> Wow, back to school sale already? Just seems like yesterday I was modeling the latest spring collection. Well, I guess time flies when you're a department store mannequin. Yeah. Say, you're new here, aren't you? Yes, I am. Just came in this morning. Hi, I'm unit Q, unit 356. Oh, a new Q unit. Nice to meet you. I'm unit J96. Whoa, an old J unit? That's so cool. Bet you've seen some stuff in your day. Yeah, lots of stuff. So you came in this morning, huh? Were you just off the assembly line or stored in a warehouse? Off the assembly line. A mere child. Stick with me, kid. I'll show you the ropes. Thanks. I remember just yesterday, I was a pile of plastic on the factory floor. And today, well, I'm working in a major department store chain. Well, you see, kid, back in my day, you had to work your way up. Hold on, someone's coming. How'd you get all that stuff? My mom's gold car. Your mom's gonna cremate you. Hey, I saved her $24.95. See, it says so right here on the receipt. Uh, yeah, spend $300 to save $24. $24.95? Your mom's gonna cremate you. Whew. We just made it back in position. Nah, we had plenty of time. You see, after working as the department store mannequin for a while, you learn to pick up vibration of approaching human units. Wow, you're great, Unit J96. Call me J. Really? Then you can call me Q. Whatever. Say, J, tell me more about these human units. I mean, what are they like? These human units? Dude, they're completely inferior beings. Really? Yeah, first, they're made out of skin, Bones, muscle, and fat cell. But mainly fat cells. <laughs> Not a durable synthetic like us? Nope. And what's worse, they're so needy. They gotta have food, water, exercise, and this thing called acceptance. But if they're so inferior, why do they even exist? That's a good question. Thank you. to make our parents happy. Um, I think something else is like, truly live a life that's glorifying to God. My purpose in life is to praise God uh, through the things I could do through the church. Like, um, I like to serve Him and that's one way I could, my best way I could praise Him. My purpose in life is to worship God and to obey Him. Uh, I believe my purpose in life is to serve God full-heartedly with all the talents that He's given me. Um, honestly, at this age, I don't know what my purpose in life is, but I think right now it's mainly to serve God and through my actions and what I say and what I do around my friends and people I meet, just try to serve God and be a good example of God in my life. Um, I thought my purpose in life is to tell the people about God and basically to help other people when they're in need. Um, I guess my purpose in life is to, as a Christian, reach out and um, encourage others and just um, be able to spread the word of God and save lives. My purpose in life is to serve God in whatever I do. Uh, my purpose in life is to uh, use the talents that God gave me to better his kingdom.
How come 
every human unit I've seen so far is different from the next. I mean, there's no two alike. See what I told you about them being inferior? There's no uniformity, no standard. There's not a mold each one is poured into at the factory. Nope, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Some 20 inches tall to over seven feet. Now that's a faulty design if I ever saw one. Well, get this, they're all created by this one guy. Some guy named God Almighty. No way. Yeah, the humans say he exists, but honestly, no one's ever seen him. Hey Jay, have you ever seen our creator? Yeah, once. Little bald guy with squinty eyes and a nasty cough. That doesn't sound almighty. Hey, but at least we can see our creator. I guess.
Jay, what's with all these warm clothes? I'm suffocating. <sighs> Must be winter again. You see, when it gets cold outside, the humans, they gotta put on more layers just to stay warm. Now that's a faulty design. Now if I design a unit, someone's coming. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Put some money in the bucket. Merry Christmas. Okay, I've had it. Hey, pal, go ring your bell someplace else. But what? You were there, and you were there, and I was just there, and my bell's here. All right, I know, it's just the uh, Christmas stress. Yeah, that's all. I mean, mannequins can't move. I, uh, mommy! <laughs> Sorry you had to see that, Q. I know it's against mannequin code 23, never let them see you move, but it's my 14th Christmas, and honestly, I've just had it. Christmas? What's that? Christmas is this ridiculous celebration that the humans have every year. Well, what are they celebrating? Can you believe it? The making of another human unit. Some guy named Jesus. Jesus? What's his purpose? What's so special about this human unit? There's nothing special about him. Well, except the fact that he was made 2,000 years ago. Jay, he's even an older unit than you. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, the humans make such a big deal about this guy, you think he's God's gift to the world or something. But he's not, right? No, no.
Sorry, Jay. You know, I didn't mean anything about you being an older unit. It's okay, kid. I'm not sensitive about my age. As a matter of fact, I look just like the day I came out of the assembly line. No way. Yeah, that's another reason why we're better than these human units. We don't age, sag, or wrinkle. We're perfect, right? Yeah, someone's coming. Nice haul today. They don't call me Sticky Fingers for nothing. Hey, hey, stop. You stole that watch right out from under my nose. <sighs> that was close. Hey, let go. Ah, uh -huh. now you're going to get it. But officer, I bought the watch, honest. Yeah, yeah. Is this the face of a liar? <laughs> so if you bought the watch, where's the receipt? Uh, I lost it. Let's just go back and see if we can find it, shall we? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, the lady never gave me one. Yeah, that's right. I remember now. So technically, she ought to be arrested. Yeah, yeah, you're breaking my heart, kid. But officer, I bought the watch, honest. <laughs> What the? I've never seen that before. That kid took that watch without paying for it. Happens quite often, especially during Christmas time. But you see the big guy chasing him? He's no better. And the assistant store manager? Man, you should hear the things they say about her. So, they're not well built on the outside, and they even have more flaws on the inside? Yeah, it's called the original sin or something. That's tough. It can't get much worse than that. Actually, buddy, it can. What's worse is most of them won't even admit oh that they're doing God. anything wrong. What? what? Don't you 
And finally, ladies and gentlemen, Chris is wearing the newest addition to our spring collection. The lightweight fabric and clean lines will keep you cool as temperatures rise. Thank you for coming today, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, for Easter apparel, there's no place like Sarah Monty Shopping Center. So, what, we're not good enough now to model the new spring collection? They have to use the inferior humans to do it? You'll get used to it, kid. Humans, they think they're superior to everything, even mannequins. But they're not. Of course not. You know that. Yeah. Hey, Jay, what's Easter? Easter? And member shoppers for Easter apparel, there's nothing like Sarah Monning Shopping Center. Easter. Oh, thank you. It's one of those ridiculous celebration, you know, like Christmas. So, they're celebrating the making of another human unit. Actually, it's the same dude. You know, the Jesus guy, but I don't know why, but it seems to be celebrating about his termination. Wait, you mean he died? Yeah, the other humans murdered him. It's a tragic and brutal death. And they celebrate that? Barbarians! <laughs> well, Jesus came to die. Ugh, oh, man. See, the way I saw it was that Jesus came to die so that the other humans wouldn't have to pay for the wrongs they've done. I don't get it. Oh. How do I explain this in simpleton terms? Um, let's see. Jesus has died for them, so humans don't have to pay for the wrong they've done. What's it like to have someone love you that much? Yeah, I got no clue. Sorry. <sighs> yeah. Hi, my name is Joanna, and today I'll be sharing with you about how I came to know Jesus. So growing up, I was not raised in a Christian family, but I went to Cornerstone Academy ever since I was in preschool, and. Going to Cornerstone Academy, they, the teachers would tell us that God is good and He loves you. In second grade, my teacher asked me if I wanted to ask Jesus into my heart. And of course I said yes, because I didn't want to go to hell. I wanted to go to heaven, and so I said yes. Um, but many years went by, and I did nothing to um, make my relationship with Him grow. In seventh grade, my friend asked me to go to camp, and I agreed, and after I came back from camp, I started going to church, and I would still have a spiritual high, but each year when we had camp, um, the spiritual high would always die down after a month, and it was not until sophomore year when my Sunday school teacher had a lesson about our relationship being cold, lukewarm, or hot with God, and that was when I decided to make spend more time with him but even though I spent, started to spend more time with God, there were so many instances where I would make mistakes. For example, um, I cheated on my test and um, I was able to pay off what I did with my teacher, but with God it's different because um, if I ask for forgiveness, He will willingly forgive me. And it amazes me how even though I mess up so much, He still will forgive me and he'll always love me. Thank you. Nothing I could 
weaknesses and pride. You know what I am going through and how I feel inside. But even though you Excuse me, um, do you know where the ladies swimwear is? Third floor, miss. Thanks. Excuse me, where can I find beach supplies? Second floor, right off the escalator. Thanks, I guess. I'm looking for a new pair of running shorts. Sporting goods. First floor, you're in luck. There's a red tag sale going on in that department today. Thanks. Break. Oh man, it's gonna be a legendary summer. We're gonna swim, go to the beach, play ball, everything. Yeah, that sounds like fun. But don't you wish you can be a human for a while so you could do those things? Swim, go to the beach, play ball. Yeah, no, no. So you're pretty happy being a store mannequin. Come on, what's not to love? We wear the latest clothes, we have the greatest view, and we're hollow on the inside, so we don't wear out. Hollow, that means we can't do things and we can't go places. We can't love or be loved like the humans can. Q, don't get soft on me. Humans, they're always looking for their purpose, their destiny, their meaning of life, yada, 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 stuff like that, okay? Me, I already know my destiny. I know my purpose. It's to stand here, look awesome forever. But Jay, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice to not be just a number? To have a real name? To be known by a creator, to know that he cares.
Well, my creator does know me. He does care. How do you know? Okay, let's see. Um, well, he... Uh, uh-oh, human alert. All right, let's take the small one first, then the other one. Okay, say, why do you think we're taking these dummies to the warehouse anyway? I don't know, do I look like a philosopher or something? I'm just following a work order. Okay, what do you think they're gonna do with them when they're through with them? I don't know, maybe junk them, maybe melt them down, maybe garbage cans or mixing bowls or something. Okay, I guess it doesn't matter. They're just a couple of dummies. Yep, just a couple of dummies. Okay, let's lift this one. Okay. Ready? One, two. Just a couple of dummies, they said. They're poured into a mold at some factory, stamped with a number, sold to a department store, and put on display. Oh, they served some minor purpose, but in the end, they were hauled away, their purpose ended. But we, humanists, as they said, have eternal purpose. God perfectly forms each one of us, cares for us, and gives each of us a reason to be here. Wait. 
I'm God's workmanship, His handiwork, born anew in Christ to do His work. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. I am a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm a citizen of heaven, seated in heaven right now. Ephesians 3, 20, Philippians 2, 6. I am a saint, Ephesians 1, 1, Corinthians 1, 2, Philippians 1, 1, Colossians 1, 2. I'm united to the Lord and am one spirit with Him. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. I am the light of the world, Matthew 5, 14. I am a child of God, John 1, 12. I am chosen and appointed by Christ to bear His fruit, John 15, 16. I am an alien and stranger to this world in which I temporarily live, 1 Peter 2, 11. I am not the great I am, Exodus 3, 14, John 8, 24, 25, and 58. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. I am a child of God, John 1, 12. I am Christ's friend, John 15, 15. I am a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I am a fellow citizen of God's family, Ephesians 2, 19. I am an enemy of the devil, 1 Peter 5, 8.
you figure out your purpose yet? You did. <laughs> That's my daughter. That's my daughter. Yes. <laughs> I think it was my daughter. It sounded like her anyway. <laughs> you know, uh, as the choir has been singing, you know, I think yeah, the idea here is that we're not mannequins, right? You know, you see the mannequin, the mannequin saying, oh, yeah, we're stupid humans. They do dumb things and everything like that. And, uh, and the truth is, you know, what gives us our worth, what gives us our value is that God loves us. God is the one who created us, and he created us for a unique relationship with him, each one of us. Each one of us is created unique. That's what these guys were talking about, right? The mannequins say, oh, they don't have just a, you know, a letter and a number, and they're all different and, and special and stuff like that. And God has done that because he, he wants us to know him. He wants us to be in, in a unique, right relationship with him. And he loves us, right? So when you hear all those things, you say, yeah, 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 that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, so why is it that people don't want to love God back? You know, what is it about God that people don't, some people don't want to, to acknowledge him, don't want to, you know, to love him back? And it's probably because you got a misconception about who God is or, or want to do your own thing, right? And, um, you know, as you're going through life, as each one of us goes through life, you know, we have these questions about you know, what is my purpose? What was I meant to do? You know, sometimes, you know, I remember growing up and just thinking, man, I think I was born in the wrong era, you know? I think I should have been born where there was no TV or no anything there and just kind of where I could just sit and be quiet next to, the, next to a, a, a stream or something like that, you know, instead of have things be a lot more complex than, than you know, in my life than I, than I think I can handle, you know? And um, so you kind of think, oh, yeah, I'm looking for just what is it that I'm suited for? What is it that I'm, I, I'm, I'm right for? You know, what is it that, that, that I'm just, you know, I'm made for? And you try to kind of figure that out. And along the way, you know, you, we, we try to, you know, we, we make mistakes and stuff. I, you know, it's like that in our careers, too. You know, I was thinking that, you know, as I was going through college and young adult life and trying to find out what, what I was going to be doing with my life, I knew the Lord. I knew I had that purpose, but at the same time, I didn't know how all that was going to work together uh, in life, you know. So there are lots of people who come to faith in Christ and grow as Christians, but not everybody becomes a pastor, right? And so you still have a, a, a purpose of serving God, but trying to find out how, you know, where's that right place? Where does it work? And, um, and, and you can function in different types of, of roles without necessarily being the right role. You know what I mean? So, so it's kind of like I was working on my car the other day and, and I remember I couldn't get something done. I needed a hammer and I was underneath the car and you know when you're working, if you've ever had to crawl underneath your car and stuff, you don't want to have to, you know, especially as you get older, right, to bend down and crawl underneath there. It's a little bit a little more difficult. And I said, ah, oh, I don't want to have to get up to get a hammer, but I need something to whack this thing to loosen it up. So I grabbed over at a wrench that I had. And I said, oh, well, this is kind of heavy and it's metal. It's not my hand, right? So I'll use it to hammer this thing as I'm under the car, then I don't have to get up. So I hammered and did what I needed to do and it worked. It functioned like a hammer. It loosened up what I was trying to loosen up. But afterwards, I looked down the wrench, you know, and it had all these dents in it, dings in it, from what I had hit the metal with it. it. It functioned like a hammer, but it's not designed to be a hammer, you know? That's not what its purpose is. That's not what it's suited for. And so it's like that in our, in our lives. We can go through things, we can do certain things, and we can function that way, but each one of us has a unique purpose with God, and we have to find out what that is. And the Bible is pretty clear about something here. You know, uh, I was talking to, uh, you know, talking to somebody about this, and just the, the, the thought came up again, and it keeps on coming up. It's like, you know, why, why am I here now? Why was I born at this time? Why did my parents bring me up the way they brought me up? Why was I born into the family I was born into? Why, was I, why, why am I living in this part of the country or in this part of the world? 
You know, why in this age? Why not some other age? And uh, the Apostle Paul, you know, was talking about God and how God has, has, has done some things there to, to help us to see who he is, to help us to see, uh, to see his goodness. And he says here in Acts chapter 17, he was talking to some philosophers who were some religious people there. And he says, you know, I can tell that you're religious because I, I see that you have little idols set up all over the place, you know. You, you're, you're trying to make sure that you're covering your bases by making sure that, you know, you worship this idol or you pay some sort of respect to, to, to this idol or to this God. But he says something here. He says, you know, um, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by hand, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. See, so the story about God is telling us that, you know, God's not some idol that we need to do something for the idol, right? We need to do something for him to try to somehow, like he needs us to do it. The, the, the God of the Bible is the one who created everything, and he doesn't actually need us to do anything for him. And so the question comes up, well, well what's our relationship supposed to be like with God then? This is what we talk about when we say God is a loving God, and he wants to be in right relationship with us. And so it goes on to say here, you know, and he made, you know, everybody and put mankind to live all on the face of the earth. And he had determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place that sh they should seek God in the hope that they might feel or find their way toward him and find him. So God, it tells us in the scriptures that the circumstances in our lives are given to us by God because it's part of how God has wired us uniquely to seek after him, to search for our purpose, to search for our purpose with him. And so, you know, we, sometimes, you know, it, it can be because you have a lots of, you know, siblings or something like that. I have two older brothers and two older sisters. The two older brothers are the two oldest. They were always palling around together. The two older sisters are always palling around together. And I always kind of felt left out in my family. Now, I knew that I was loved and everything, but the older brothers would go off and do things, and then the older sisters would go off and do things, and I'd kind of be by myself there as the youngest. And, and because of that, right, God gave me some thoughts in my heart and, 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 you know, got me thinking about what life is all about. When you're lonely and it doesn't all go, it's not all going the way that you think it should, then that's when you start to ask questions. And the Bible tells us that, all these circumstances, how many siblings you have, where you grew up, how your parents raised you, whether they sent you to church or not, or brought you through a different religious background, is all part of what God is doing to try to get us to find him, to, to motivate us, to stimulate us, to seek him because he's not far away. That's what it tells us here. And it says that, you know, uh, he is actually not far from each one of us. Uh, it says, in him we live and move and have our being. And even uh, some other people, some other poets that were writing, we are indeed his offspring. As this, this idea that God is the creator of everything, he's our father. Right? And that's, that's legitimate. But we got to be in a loving relationship with our father. We can't just say, oh, there's our father and we don't know anything about him. We haven't gotten to know him. We don't know how he functions. We don't know what he feels. We don't know how he thinks. We don't know what he wants. That, that's something else. That's a computer or something, you know. And so it says here, being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. And we're always doing this. Even if we don't make these little idols or anything like that, even if we don't carve out images, we carve out in our mind an image of what it looks like, you know, what success looks like, what our purpose in life looks like, you know, to be successful, to have status, to accumulate riches, whatever it is, you know. That becomes our idol. That becomes the thing that we're working towards. And God's not like that. 
See, he's not an idol. He's not made out of gold and silver. And it's like we have to worship this statue. God is personal and personable. And so it says, the times of ignorance God overlooked in the past, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Think about this. If God is not God, then, then he didn't have to say anything to you, right? But if he's really God, then isn't it right for him to command something of us? Doesn't that make sense? And so it says here, God commands all of us to repent, tells us to turn away from our sin. And, and, and God, you could get, well, well, why does God tell us I have to turn away from our sin? Because it's wrong. Plain and simple. It's damaging to you, it's damaging to other people, and it's damaged your relationship with God. So turn away from your sin. Receive God's forgiveness in his son, Jesus Christ. If God didn't love us, he wouldn't have sent Jesus. Pretty simple. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he sent his own one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I mean, you, you may have heard these things before. I'm not sure if you have. I, I don't know if you haven't. But it's still true. God loves us and he's done something about it and he wants us to know him. And that starts from acknowledging him as God. That starts with acknowledging that he is God and we are not. And you could say, hey, I've lived my whole life not really knowing this and now I know this and I realize I've been living for myself. I've been doing my own thing when I knew that maybe I should be doing something different. I chose to go my own way. But here's the time what we call repentance. It's to turn from that direction of doing our own thing. I'm going to mess with the spotlight guy. No. And, 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 and turn towards God. And so God commands us to do that. Why? Because he wants us to acknowledge that we've been living our own lives, that we've been doing our own thing, making our own purpose up along the way, even if it wasn't God's intended purpose for us. And like I said, we can function in different ways, but it's not the way we were intended to function. Goes on here real fast. It says here, the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed the day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him, this man, Jesus, is his name, from the dead. So all that God is doing is to accomplish his purposes. And his purposes are so that we would know that he loves us, that we would know that we could be in right relationship with God because he has provided a way in his son, Jesus Christ, so that our sins can be forgiven, we can be made right with him by turning from our sin and receiving his forgiveness. And God wants us to know that he's giving us this opportunity to do that. Right? You know how it is. I don't, you, know, you probably know if you're, if you're here watching your children on stage, you know that they're probably procrastinators. They probably are up late at night, the night before their project is due, or their test is, is going to be happening, and they're studying, and they're trying to get it all done, right? Because they know there's a deadline. But if the teacher doesn't give a deadline... And you as parents ask them, don't you have any homework to do? Don't you have any projects to do? I don't know. Teacher didn't give us a deadline. I don't know when it's due. I don't have anything to do. Right? God has given us a deadline too. Why? Because he knows how we are. And he's saying, this is who he is. He's a loving God who loves us enough to extend forgiveness to us. But he's only giving us that for our lifetime, if you will. We got that much time to get it right. And I'm saying that to you in all earnestness because I want to plead with you on this. I don't want you to come in here and, and see this musical and listen to some preaching and then just walk out and saying, hey, you know what? I don't know about God. I'm just going to go on with my life. Because that, that, that's, not, that's not the right response. That's not what God wants. That's why he's letting us hear this now because he's giving us an opportunity in his grace and in his mercy to repent of our sin, to turn from our own ways and to receive his forgiveness. You know, because we've been trying to do our own thing. Everybody wants to live life on their own terms. That's, that's kind of how we want to usurp God's authority. 
But whenever we do that, we just kind of go through life doing our own thing. We'll make a lot of mistakes. And not only will we make a lot of mistakes, we might hurt a lot of people. And at some point in time, when somebody wants to determine their own way, it definitely is going to mess some other people up because their assertion of what they want to do causes other people to have trouble. I'm here tonight just to tell you that as the choir has been singing, I have a purpose. And as a Christian, as somebody who has found my purpose in Christ, I want to share that with you. And I want to give you a chance to respond to that too. Because God wants you to acknowledge him as God and to start living life fulfilling the purpose of living for him, honoring him with your thoughts, honoring him with your behavior, honoring him with your, your character, honoring him with your skills, honoring him with your, you know, with your talents. Whatever he has entrusted to us, he's done it, not so that we wouldn't enjoy ourselves, but so that we would give glory to him in what we're doing and we would find purpose in what we're doing. God has given us a purpose. Do you know that purpose? Do you know God? You can know God by turning from your sin, just coming to God and saying, I receive your forgiveness. I'm just going to leave that with you now because I, I know the time is getting long and everything like that. I want to leave that with you. If you want to talk to me about it, that's fine. I'll be here after the service. You can talk to me. Uh, if you want to know more, start attending church. Ask your kids some questions. If you don't know, or if, if you're not a Christian and, and, you, and you want to ask them, or start reading the, the Bible there and, and start seeking after God if you're trying to figure it out. Because God has put that in you. Because he wants you to know him. He wants you to know your purpose in life. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for being good to us, God. And thank you for, for being a loving God. That you're using all sorts of things in life to get our attention, God. Even the very times in which we live, the places in which we grew up, Lord, the families we've been put in, God. So that we would seek after you. So we would find you God and you're not hiding in a place where we can't find you you want to be known God otherwise you would have never sent your son Jesus you would have never told us about you you would have never told us what you want from us God you just leave us groping in the dark all our days if you weren't a loving God if you weren't a forgiving God and so we appeal to that now God to your grace to your mercy to your love I pray Lord that you would move in people's hearts that you would draw them to yourself God and help them to acknowledge you as Lord. We thank you, God, that you are a loving God and you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins so that we could be forgiven, so that he would be willing to pay a price that we couldn't pay for ourselves, and that Jesus would rise again from the grave so that we can know the victory over sin, the victory over death. I pray, God, that if there are people out here tonight who don't know that, that you would impress that upon their hearts, that you would draw them to yourself and help them to know, God, that you're a loving God, you stand ready to forgive. There's nothing that anybody has done that you're not willing to forgive. And that if they come to you, God, you're there to forgive and you've already initiated the relationship by sending Jesus. Help them to respond, Lord. Help each one of us to continue to respond. Responding in love, responding in obedience to you God thank you for being a loving God and giving us this time together giving us the musical and watch over us now as the choir has one more song and as we uh, round up our evening together in Jesus name we pray amen
But I hold on to this home And the promise that he brings That there will be a place With no more suffering There will be a day With no more tears No more pain And no more fears There will be a day When the burdens of this place Will be no fast. I'm not going to preach another sermon. Uh, uh, I just want to invite you to service if you're looking for a church, you don't have a church, or you're just kind of finding out or asking questions about God. Uh, we have church services, uh, Sunday service uh, for a high school and middle school students at 10 o'clock at 801, I mean 801, 501 Cambridge, which is down the block here, about four or five blocks.